Hello everyone. We are doing a video series on how to add Copilot Studio as a skill in Azure Bot Framework. This is part three, third video in the series, adding Copilot as a skill in Azure Bot Framework and deploying that as web service. So the best way, in the last video, we took the token at point for a very simple Copilot Studio. In this video, we'll look at the code in Visual Studio. This is Azure Bot Framework, a very simple Azure Bot. Uh, this is primarily taken from the EchoBot sample and I modified it to add Copilot as a skill. So this is my main class for EchoBot. This code is written in Node.js. The same concept applies to any language, C-sharp also, but uh, for simplicity's sake, this one is in Node.js. So you have your EchoBot or whatever bot name you have, in the activity handler when you're starting, as you can see, I have created a class of myself, copilot skill class.js. That's a class that I'm calling. And that's where all the functionalities for calling copilot studio as, um, uh, as, as a skill takes place. Here, all I'm doing is as I'm getting the message from the user, I'm just calling this class and calling its method get bot response and whatever response we get, we just process it. So that's all that is happening in this code at high level. By the way, this code is available for Cloudetica premium subscribers. So if you need access to this complete code base, reach out to us at hello at cloudetica.com and we are happy to make you a premium member and give you access to this code. In Copilot Studio class, uh, he is a constructor where I have a method which fetches the token. And what it is doing is it is actually fetching the token based on the token endpoint that we got in the previous step from the Copilot Studio. And get a bot response is the method that we saw is called from this bot class. So what this method does first is checks if the token is available it's fine, otherwise it goes and calls this method to fetch the token. And for fetching the token, all it does, it just does some configuration and then makes a request to this endpoint to get the token. And after getting the token, it makes another call to start the conversation. Once you start the conversation, you will get a conversation ID and token back. And that's what you're going to use in the following ones. So now you will see here is we are getting the message. We are using the token endpoint. And now we are calling this endpoint again to send the message to the bot. Bot receives the message and it processes it. And you'll see after that, I'll wait for some time just because it takes some time for bot to respond and get the response back. And this is the response that I return back to the main class. And here, like I mentioned, you're getting the response back from the bot. And now you're processing it one by one, seeing if the response is corresponding to the message that was sent. And you're just sending the response back to the bot. So it's a bit complicated code, but if you think about it, th these are the main things that we do is we take the token endpoint and using the token endpoint, we now communicate from Azure Bot Framework with the Copilot Studio. I know this was a lot to process. Uh, recently, we wrote a Medium article also on that. And whatever I'm talking about is all mentioned in detail in this article. I'll give the link to this article in the description below. And you will see all those uh, code bases and the snippets of the code in this article that you can look at it in detail and understand what's going on there. So, and, and if you need the full access to the code base, then let us know. We'll be happy to give you access, uh, but it's only for the premium members of Cloudetica. The last thing that I want to tell you also is uh, I will not share this file because it has my secrets in terms of password and all that. But here's the environment file. And in this environment file, it should look something like this, where you give your app type, app ID, password, and tenant ID. These are all coming from your app registration in Azure. 
Like I mentioned, you're expected to have that basic knowledge of app registration for this tutorial. But if you don't know, and if you need help in that, reach out to us and we'll be happy to give you training on that. So that's about the coding part of it. Now, second part is you have to deploy this as a web service because now your code is ready. In my Visual Studio, I can uh, actually, if I go and do just npm start, let me do it in the video to show it to you. So if I do npm start, actually this web service has started. And now uh, there's an endpoint at this URL where if you put API messages, your bot framework is ready to talk to Copilot Studio, but this is only in local host, local computer. How do you make sure that this can be accessed over the internet? So you have to deploy this as a web service. Now, uh, in the proper setting, you need to really deploy it uh, in, a, uh, in a web service. There are Azure web service, it could be anywhere. It doesn't have to be Azure. It could be any web service. Uh, Azure offers something out of the box that you can use, or you can use any VM, any virtual machine yourself and deploy it. Now deploying and managing these web services is also tricky for experiment and testing purposes, it's fine. But if you want something scalable, it needs more sophisticated development skills where you need to continuously monitor, make sure that your web services are performing very well. Um, again, uh, we are not going to go into detail in that. I'm assuming you have the expertise. Cloudetica off also offers some managed service for that. So if you want us to deploy and manage and monitor your web service, uh, reach out to us. We'll be happy to do that for you. Now for this tutorial, what uh, I will do is I'll use the utility and rock and I covered this utility in my earlier videos also. This is great tool if you want to just test out your local host and make it internet connectable. So you run a command like this, you will get something like this in return. That means that now this URL corresponds to this local ho host, this port. And that's what we're going to use in connecting to Azure Bot. So that's about this tutorial. This was the most involved tutorial, uh, the, the video in the series. In the next part of the series, we'll now create a Telegram bot and get the access token of the Telegram bot. There's so many tokens that we are talking about, but this access token that uh, we're going to cover in the next tutorial is for Telegram bot, what Telegram app offers. That is different from the access token of Copilot Studio that we talked about. We'll use that access token to configure with Azure Bot service. And also we will configure Azure Bot service to uh, connect to this deployed web service that we did in this tutorial. So see you in the next video.